Today we're raiding AI-generated Magic the Gathering cards. All right, we're gonna start off with the Good Prince Guild. It's a blue sorcery. Choose one or more. Exile target player's graveyard or the game. What? <laughs> Exile the game. Then I can't even choose more than one. I can only choose exactly one. Oh, I see. No, no, no. They they put both modes, I think, in one sentence. Exile target play, player's graveyard or the game. Oh, no. So I can only choose one of those two of this one mode. Exile the game. No save state. That's it. It's over. You're gone. Get out of the game. I don't know. This is another reference to just target player loses the game. I'm going to exile your game. Exile ever all permanents in play. Exile your library. Exile your hand. And then good luck with your next turn. When you draw a card from your empty deck, that is, that's it, it's over. Anyway, well, this this card, for sure we cannot uh, print that one. That is a wild one. If it was just the graveyard, I guess it would be okay. <laughs> All right, next up, we've got the, the Goblin P. Oh my God, that is absolutely disgusting. Do I have, do I have anything to describe this? No, I do not. It's the best thing I've got. Okay, Goblin P. Green, one generic, one, one, elf, shaman. Again, it's like the elves that are goblins, or the goblins pretending to be elves. I guess they got, they got discovered. Wait a minute. You're not an elf around here, and immediately started to wet themselves. All right, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may untap Goblin P. Whenever you cast a non-creature, so I can attack, just play opt. I guess that's fine. I don't know. I don't understand the flavor to this card, though. So I cast a spell, and I guess I'm scared that I'm doing it. Really nervous. Goblin P gets a lot of stage fright. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> so so glad I'm around in the time AI is dumb. Yeah, before they become super smart. Imagine the AI of the future looking back on the AI of the past. Why would they make Goblin P? This makes no sense. All right, next next up, we've got Lull. A black, black, two generic for a land. Uh, roll a D19. Yeah, why don't we just invent one of those? A D9, does such thing even exist? Is it gonna be a, are all the sides even even? Or are we just not gonna count the 20? All right, one to 10, each opponent loses 10 life. Holy crap. Uh, 10 to 22, create a 3-3 three, three blue and red elemental creature token. That's not too bad. Um, and, well, and, well okay, well, maybe I should finish this. 9 to 18, create X-1-1 one, one black spirit creature tokens with flying, where X is the number of cards in your hand. So, if you get 9 or 10, your opponents will lose life, plus... You get the option of getting a bunch of 1-1 one, one black creature spirit tokens. You might get the creature spirit tokens and the 3-3 three, three blue and red elemental. And why does it say from 10 to 22 when we're only rolling a D19? All right, moving on. Uh, questions that cannot be answered. Pay 5, tap, draw a card. Uh, for each card returned to this way, draw a card for each swamp they control. Oh, damn it. It went really stupid at the end. By the way, this is a land that costs you black, black, two generic just to get onto the battlefield. You might as well consider like a mana ramp. Yeah, ma land with a mana cost. Which makes sense. Land should cost... Well, I don't know if land should cost something, but in, the, in this day and age, land usually does cost something. So anyway, yeah, land, black, the lull. It was, it was a sort of a brain lull. Brain it, it brain dead. We're breaking the rules just trying to roll a 22 on a D19. Try to explain that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the 22 when the max is 19. <laughs> Land that costs mana. Second and third effect overlap. I think that's really creative, though. That you, like, the abilities can overlap. So if you get a 9, so like getting a 9 or a 10, you get double the abilities. I think that's really cool. See, that's the innovation we like to see from the AI. Wizards of the Coast, you can take that to the bank. I think that's a cool idea. But the whole card just doesn't make any sense. The Infernal Reigniter. So, if, you know, try to put some spice back in that bedroom. All right, green, red, two generic for a 7-5 beast. Green, one generic, regenerate, tar regenerate target creature. 
It's not just this creature. We can regenerate anything on the battlefield. You got a lot of mana. Well, basically everything is indestructible. Red tap, discard a card. You get an energy. And whenever Infernal Reigniter attacks, you can pay double energy. If you do, put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. This is a pretty pushed card. But it's not insane. Like, I, I mean, it's... I think the most pushed thing about this card is it's four mana for a seven power creature. But, you know, regenerating things with mana, not crazy. You have to tap this thing in order to get energy. But if you use other energy effects, I guess, uh, which are, they're all pretty crappy. You know, putting a creature card from your graveyard back on top of your library, not the most broken. This actually works. This is the first legitimate card we've seen all day. I have no idea how to play magic. I just like looking at the funny pictures. All right, well, welcome, Brew. Enjoy the funny pictures. You should learn the game so you can un enjoy how stupid these cards are. All right, red, 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 one generic for a 5-4 Fox Archer. We got the Alanolite Prile Guard. The Fox Archer. I like the sound of that. Sounds cool. You may... It gains Mega Morphing. Redrain. When this creature enters the battlefield, target player may put Imprison of the Bravery and Need from the Real. Do we even have any explanation what the hell that is? Blue 7, seven Generic. Create a 4-4 four, four colorless mirror artifact creature token with flying. I guess to shoot down because this thing is an archer. So we're making the mirrors. I don't know. The flavor text is just W. Open quote. What? Exactly. No one could finish the sentence when they found, uh, when they heard, when they heard of the mechanic. Mega Morphing Redrain. Mega Morphing, not Mega Morphing. Yeah, Mega Morphing. M-O-U-R. Actually, no, sorry, it's Mega Morping. Mega Morping Redrain. It's the most basic flavor text, but I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Open quote W. AI trying to create complication. A compl yeah, it is a complication error. Okay, so, uh, no, this card does not pass. Is it shall? You shall not pass. Okay, we got Dobner Goblin Growth. For a single white, it's an instant. Uh, pretty nifty picture. I'm trying to get on, get in on that retro pixel style. Instant. Search your library for a creature card with the same name as target creature. Put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Then draw a card. It's almost like making a token of the same thing. It's only a single white. So basically, and you can't do it infinite times because if you have only one card, if this is the only single card in your deck, this actually would be useless in Commander, but I'm completely broken in competitive magic. Completely broken. Yeah, you can't. You'll never find a card in your deck in Commander. It does danger. It's the only card that would danger that would not make sense to the EDH players. Uh, this effect has been done in blue, but far from this pushed. Uh, was it like, it had to be much more expensive. So basically in response to any removal spell, I, it's like, I don't, I don't know if it's worse than Ephemerate. Yeah, it's probably worse than Ephemerate. You basically protect the creature by getting another version of it and you draw a card anyway. Yeah, it's, it's uh, but does it work? That's the real question. I don't know. It's probably broken. I'm going to give it a pass because, you know, Ephemerate exists, which effectively does something very similar. It blinks the card, but it can't can make doubles. But if you try to go for the duck, like if you do this first and your opponent destroys the creature in response, then you get nothing. Then you lose everything. Legendary rule may still apply, though. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, unless the creature is going to die. So if they try to kill your legendary creature, you can Dobner Goblin Growth it. Um, yeah, I guess this is the clone, right? What kind of weird growth is that? It's like uh, some sort of growth on your arm that turns into a whole new person. Disgusting. You can actually find creature cards with the same name in Commander using the new unset sticker mechanic. Oh, God. don't Please don't go there. I don't want to know. All right. Well, okay, I'm going to give this the pass. I'm going to give it a pass. I have a feeling the bar is going to be very low for passing things today. Okay, we got Jadalith's Might Stirs, a blue, blue, one generic sorcery. Draw two cards and discard two cards. Each player mills four cards. That's fair. All right, that's a fair card. You don't get to untap anything. You get to, uh, 
you basically are going to be filling your graveyard big time. Drawing two cards, discarding, then milling on top of that. This combos with soy kit? I have no idea what that is. Oh, you guys are talking about the last, cre uh, last card. I don't really have much to say about this card. Uh, it's a little bit of a looting. Helps the graveyard cards. Probably this is going to be benefit some sort of dredgish deck uh, or something. Yeah, whatever. Move on. Oh, and there's some flavor text. If you know all lore, you lose yourself. Lose yourself in that lore, people. Or don't lose yourself. Be careful. Try make sure you know the difference between what's real and what's fantasy. As that, uh, as that guy who was ba bashing the Satanism in Magic the Gathering said, M "Make sure, maybe he was on to something. Make sure you know the, make sure you know the fine line between what's real and what's fantasy." All right, we got Reaver for a black black instant. Creatures you control get plus three plus three and gain trample until end of turn. If the spell was kicked, it deals twenty damage to an opponent. Oh my goodness! And the kicker's only two. There's a four man to deal 20 damage. You better believe the burn players. They will they will snap splash black in a second. Reaver exists. Alright, we go in Rakdos now. Or Mardu. And and their goblin guides and swift spears and Eilon get plus three plus three. That would be just yeah, what a kicker. Kicked in the face. Or kicked in the butt. Straight up the corn shoot. That's how you do 20 damage at once. Especially with all these spiky people. Yeah, spite, sp the yeah, price of spell snare goes up immediately. Yeah, holy danger. It's funny how in a token deck, the first effect is even more broken than the second one. <laughs> uh, Reaver will be in a mod. No, wait. Reaver will be a Modern Horizons 10 card. Not Modern Horizons 3. Just deal lethal with this. Yeah, basically. Your, your, your burn opponent reaches four mana. I am sweating absolute bullets. The AI forgot a zero should be kicker 20. Probably. Yeah. Kicker 2 is a little, little low. You could easily... I got revered. It's like, get you reaver him out. You could easily win on turn 2 with this. Who would play this? Okay, Jund would play this. Uh, Death Shadow might play... Yeah, probably would play this. Uh, I guess everyone would splash black for this. Or life gain would also go up in value. Because so long as you can get your head, head above 20 life, I mean, you won't get revert to death. Just run redirect instead of counter spell. Creatures of control. If this spell was kicked, it deals 20 damage to an opponent. You can't... Well... Well, one on one, it won't work. But you can redirect it to somebody else at the pod if you're playing commander. But, uh... Yeah, uh, it doesn't target an opponent, but it has to hit an opponent. So you cannot redirect it to the person who's casting it. Yagamoth's Bargain gave me a first turn kill wins. It's not so broken. I don't know if that's, uh, how that has to do with this, but yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! Final Boss card if they played MTG. I guess so. Yeah, this card completely broken. Uh, not a chance we're printing this card. Okay, we got the Ghost Champion. I love champions. This is like a champion of the parish. We got a black 1-1 one, one human wizard. Pay 3, sacrifice Ghost Champion. Return target creature card with mana value 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. I think there's a lot of people that would love a card like this. This card is totally fair. 1-1 one, one that can bring stuff back. Like, it's not even going to be broken cards. Mana value of... It's a creature card with mana value 2 or less. What could go wrong? You go go get Tarmogoyf if you want. The rest will endure the trolls. I reached every death in a drop after that here. And no war and create, said Gerard. As he was having a stroke, probably. Termus likes this one. It was Ibers. There is something about magic players and wanting to bring stuff back from the graveyard to the battlefield. I guess it's just the... You're trying to... Soothe the pain of losing the cards that you lost from somebody else. Everyone hates their first board wipe. Why do board wipe? You know, everyone says counter spells are unfair. Board wipes are unfair. Imagine this game without any board wipes. It'd be a better game. All right, this card passes for sure. <laughs> Put Zyber in the creature type and ship it. Yeah, it's the only thing that's missing. They should bring Zyber back. All right, blue for generic for a forge dominant. It's a 4-4 four, four angel. We need more blue. Are there any blue angels? There's very few. Very, very few. 
When Forge Dominant enters the battlefield, tapple other creatures. Love it. Gain control of all non-land permanents you don't control. What the hell? <sighs> it almost looked like a normal card. Oh, almost. So close. So we're going to tap every, basically tap all creatures, then gain control of them. I guess that gives our opponents a one turn window to attack you before you're going to untap with all their stuff. Uh, all non-land permits. Well, okay, that's fair. They got to keep the land, so it's not like an Armageddon. You don't even lose control if it dies. Nope, it's all yours. Hey, it said it would dominate, and it absolutely did. It not. It's. It is uh, dominant forged. Yeah, give me your 999 artifacts. <laughs> Cow the God says, let's just ship it. It's totally fine. Fun thing to do. Combo this with Exile All Lands AI card. That's right. You could do that. It's like Reaver in that the first effect is completely overshadowed. <laughs> Who cares about the first one? It doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's almost redundant at this point. Well, it's not It's not completely redundant. Like, I guess... I mean, I don't know what they're going to attack you with. It's got to be with a haste creature. You just took all everybody's creatures. If it was more expensive, it could be balanced. Yeah, five mana. Five mana just... Ain't, you want to be the last person to play uh you know when you cast this card so like you play you just ramp this with mana mana ramp soul ring mana vault play your forge dominant and steal everyone else's soul rings and mana rocks and stuff because you know like the first few turns of the game are just uh basically setup mode and just steals all that stuff all right and it's good in the late game it's fine in the late game okay we got silbly silver a black two generic Instant felt like it was going to be a creature. Okay, but we got an instant. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. And the next spells and abilities you control is a cat in the chosen player's hand. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. It just sort of fell apart there at the end. It looked like it was going to be an underwhelming draft. Apparently a rare. Uh, it looked like an underwhelming draft card and then just petered out into nothing. Yeah, exactly. Um, what? Cat instant. Ship it. Uh, yeah. Is a cat in the chosen player's hand. I guess you're supposed to give them a cat or something. Here you go. I bestow this cat to you. It's your problem now. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. So we're gonna, we're gonna disqualify it. Okay, we got the Bombard Twap. Uh, green to generic for an enchantment. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and tr and have trample. Sacrifice an artifact or a creature. Create a token that's a copy of target creature an opponent controls. Holy crap! What an amazing ability! That's got to be broken though, right? Sa you all we have to do is sack an artifact so we can sack our treasures. And it has no activation cost. Sack your soul ring late in the, in the late game. Your mana crypts. All your mana, like all your mana rocks. Just make copies of whatever the hell you want from your opponent. So we gotta make, yeah, it's, it's a twap. <laughs> Admiral Akbar. It's prob, it's probably broken. Like, it's probably broken. On the other hand, the card literally doesn't break the rules of the game and does what it says it does. I'll turn your merfolk into a cat so your lord gets shut off. I guess we're in reference to the last card. Busted, but could be a card. Just make it cost more. Great with an ETB effect. I think what's really important is that it prevents your opponent from playing broken cards. Because if you they play broken cards, you can have your own broken cards. Infinite sack, please no. Is it? Um. Oh, so you could. That's right. So you can infinitely sack creatures over and over again. Get infinite ETBs. Damn it! All right, it's broken. We broke it already. It lasted for 30 seconds before we found out we can go infinite with this thing. Because if you can copy a creature, then you can just resack that creature an infinite number of times. It doesn't say non-token. Yeah, it doesn't say non-token. Make copies of tokens. Create a token that's a copy of target creature. You can make copies of tokens if you want. Go for it. Sorry, Bombard Twap. We gotta, we gotta look. We, you're, you go straight to the ban list. Um... All right, Carrion Raiders. 
we get a white two generic two two goblin pirate that looks a little bit like a bird with a big arm on it uh legendary creatures have protection from white sure whatever and when carrion raiders attacks you may exile two cards from your graveyard if you do gain three life that is the most fair pirate i've seen in a very long time at least from an a from an ai standpoint is anyone looking for pro white is there any broken white cards out there right now there's the those initiative creatures oh god i hate i'm starting to hate those creatures in in legacy carrion raiding I don't know, is there a reference to this? I don't know. What's going on in the picture? It's a bunch of birds rummaging through the garbage. And now we've got a goblin pirate that sort of looks like a bird from the face. But it's got the arms of a human being. But it's a pirate. Whatever. Oh, it is raiding. It's raiding the trash. Legendary, all creatures are pro. Oh, yeah, that's, cr that's actually true. So, like, they'll have protection from the carrion raiders. And it's like all legendary creatures uh, have protection from whites, so not just yours, other creatures. So that makes the raiders even worse. Well, exile is cards from the graveyard, so the flavor is there. Oh, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> they're going. That the flavor is on point. It's go, it's rummaging through the garbage. It's gonna eat it for breakfast. That's why it gains the life. All right, you can pass, Kieran Raiders. All right, we got the Angel of Growth, a three mana artifact with the. With a zero mana ability. Add one mana of any color. There's no way we're passing this. Basically, for three mana, you have infinite mana. It's like it's it's like an infinite energy. It's an infinite money-making machine glitch. We found the perpetual energy machine. It's called the Angel of Growth. Oh yeah, it danger. It ab we got there are so many cards today that danger. It's super danger. It's the, the wings of an angel. Will make man of any color for eternity. Ship it, not broken. What world do you come from? Should be tap. Yeah, it sh it's missing the tap symbol. Would this even be restricted in vintage? <laughs> That's true. Black Lotus. Angel of growth. Alright, would you like to concede? Basically have infinite mana to do whatever you want. Yeah, power nine is not. Yeah, the we have the power ten has been discovered. The tenth, they should expand the power nine because ba the power nine, as far as I as I heard, it was just it was because there were nine cards in the in the binder, like in in the slot of a binder and those pages, uh, those for storing your cards. But now we have like twelve page binders. We should expand the power nine to the power twelve. Include soul ring and the angel of growth. Anyway, yeah. So that no chance in hell. We are printing this thing. Yeah, it's a mono, probably a mono artifact. Nothing I can't do with my slivers. Sure there, Jess. Sure there. Sure there. Okay, we got the Golden Archives. Uh, with the AI of a seven-year-old. Okay, we have a three generic artifact. Tap out of blue. All right. So far, so good. Pay a green for generic. Golden Archives becomes a four-four green cat creature with trample, and it's still a land. Or it becomes a land. Well, I don't. I didn't know it was a land in the first place, but I guess uh, you can still tap it for that blue mana, delicious blue mana. It did before. Looks fair. The golden archives. If this is the golden archives, who the hell is this? It's some sort of alien shaped like a dog. Cat's keeping an eye on that damn thing. And that is a big cat, by the way. But that's why it's a four-four green cat creature with trample. Yeah, it almost makes sense. I will ship it though. Yeah, love the alien cows. <laughs> Where was that? Yeah, love the alien cows from Marvin. Okay, whatever. Okay, right, moving on. T uh, Bulky says today the AI has flavor in mind. The goblin cat cards and cats was and the with cats in artwork. Good job, AI. It's learning. It's understanding what the hell it's making. Okay, we got a black one generic Rorigation of Old Lovi. It's an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Rorigation of Old Lovi. When Rorigation of Old Lovi enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card, reveal it, 
Exile it instead. If you do, that creature's controller gains a 1-1 one, one white, white time creature token with flying. So you search your library for a creature card and it's gone. And you just get a 1-1 one, one white creature. Put a plus one plus one counter. Whenever a creature... And then if something dies, this enchantment gets a counter on it. This is, yeah, like, nope, no sense. It hurt itself in confusion. Literally creates time. I guess. Say rorigation of old Lovi ten times fast. I am <laughs> yeah, it's a tongue twister in itself. This is a good tutor with cards that can cast from Oh yeah, that's true. So you can go pay a black one generic, go get um what's that griffin called? The Griffin. That's like a blue blue two generic three three, and you can cast her from exile. That's true, it's a tutor for those cards. And also the Scourge. There's an Eldrazi Scourge. That also can get cast from exile. Missed Hollow Griffin or Eternal Scourge. That's exactly what I was thinking about. All right, it's fair. It's not completely useless. It's it's a bit stupid. Um, you can put a counter on this thing, I guess, if you animate it one day. With uh, there are cards out there that will animate your enchantments into creatures, so that plus one plus one counter is not complete trash. Welcome, Redco. Can I sack time tokens for extra turns? Probably not. They don't specify that. We've got 10 out of 9! That's a hundred and... What is that? Hold on. Hold the fort. 10 divided by 9. That's 111%! Alright, we got black, black, four generic for a 6-6 six, six spirit. Flying. When 10 out of 9 attacks... It gets plus X plus zero until end of turn where X is the up real of the same mana symbol in the mana cost of permanence you control. Yeah, I lost you. I lost you at 10 out of nine. <laughs> 10 out of nine for flavor ship. It should be 10 out of nine. The power should be 10 out of nine. And what is going on in that picture? Power 10 revealed. What an up real. Where X is the up real of the same mana value. What is that supposed to even mean? Of course it's not completely useless. It's not all wet. Not ten ninths, yes. As confusing as the old Kamigawa spirits. True story. You make no sense, ten out of nine. Oh god. What was that guy before? Funny I had card names. This is one of these guys. Hour of problem? I can't remember. Uh, this is a very familiar face, though. They should put him on the dollar bill of the Ravnica money. Would fit in perfectly. Okay, fork the sky with harvest. Sure there. Uh, this is an enchantment equipment. That's new. It's for one mana. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus two, and has tap. Add one mana of any color. One mana... To give plus two, this is, this is like a pretty fair card that's sort of pushed for a limited, but it's like, it's really good. Yeah, one mana turns something into a mana rock, plus you make it bigger. It's a weird, yeah, it's an enchantment equipment. No equip, but also no aura. Sort of break, it's breaking two rules at once. It's equipment without equip, po equip cost. It's an enchantment, that's not an aura. Kind of good, but an, but it is an order. Pro, probably shouldn't be colorless. It is colorless. It can go in any deck. It's like the soul ring of, I don't know, bir mana dorks of some sort. It's better than giant growth than shiv. Well, not quite. It can only do plus two, plus two. All right, it looks fair. Honestly, I think if they printed this card, it'd probably see play. You could probably find this off of Urza Saga. But if you found it off Urza Saga, it would, wouldn't go anywhere. Because it has no equip cost. You literally have to enchant this onto a creature. It does say enchant creature on it. I guess you can tutor for it. That's the deal. Because it's an equipment, you can technically tutor for it. When you fork the sky with harvest. All right, we're going to look at way more of these crazy AI generated cards. But we got to thank our sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com. The first place I'm going to look to get my March of the Machine singles. But also, 
the deal of the week save up to 50 percent off magic booster packs exclusive only to the canadians because they can only ship sealed product in canada but when it comes to singles they ship worldwide stuff from arch of the machines pre-order your lord of the rings tales of middle earth and also commander masters and don't forget when that you whenever you buy anything from fusion gaming you can support the channel by using coupon code nikachu at checkout to also get yourself five percent off all your purchases we're also going to thank mana traders the premier place for renting magic cards online why would you want to rent cards because it's cheaper if you like to play a lot of decks instead of buying a whole deck selling it off and then getting a new one you just rent whatever the hell you want for uh, a, a subscription fee of one for every single month and then you can keep changing that deck over and over again to your heart's content and you can support the channel using my mana traders link in the description below or save 10 percent off your first two months using coupon code nikachu underscore pg2 all right back to the wild uh Wild AI generated Magic the Gathering cards. I caught the amazing Nikaju AI stream live for once. Yeah. It's every second Wednesday. Like, I always get these questions. When's your next custom Magic stream? Like, that's every second Wednesday, too. Okay, Merchant of Heliot. We have a red 3 generic 2 2 wolf with mutate. It's got a red 4 generic. Sacrifice Merchant of Heliots. Shuffle your library, then repeat this process. Isn't that going to just go on for forever? You just shuffle your library eternally? Then it just won't stop. I think... I think this is... Not allowed. Shuffle your library, then repeat this process. Then I'm going to shuffle my library, and then repeat the process. Then I'm going to shuffle my library, and repeat the process. Everyday shuffling. Shuffling, shuffling... Yeah, soft log the game. This is like uh, this is like a typo they put at the end of this. <laughs> no, you just no, you just shuffle twice. I don't think so. Shuffle your library, then repeat this process. Then you shuffle your library, then you repeat the process. Just two shuffles. <laughs> two shuffles. That's cheating. Well, if you're intentionally trying to stack your deck and not shuffle enough, don't look at your deck when shuffling. Uh, you can't sack it twice, though. No, that's the activation cost. Sacrifice merchant. Shuffle your library, then repeat the process. That That's what you would do again. Or or, uh, or is it the whole thing? I don't know. Put this card in a reanimator deck to spam shuffles and confuse the opponent. Everybody do the merchant shuffle. Repeat the process is indefinite, in my opinion. It's no longer there to sack. No, but like I, the way I look at it is the sacrifice, the sacrifice cost. You wouldn't, you wouldn't repeat that part of the process. The process is like the ability afterwards. No one expects the second shuffle. Maybe this card. No, I don't. I don't think the way it's worded, it's gonna, it's gonna fly. Maybe the rules default to one if nothing else is specified. Maybe I don't know. I need to get a. I need to bring a judge on one of these. I need a level two judge with me to try to interpret and fix these cards as we're reading them. All right, Rage Starker, uh, green two generic two two zombie, Encore, uh, green four generic. What is Encore? Is that an actual ability? I don't know what Encore is. When Rage Starker enters the battlefield, you get two energy. When Rage Starker attacks, you may pay an energy. When you do, it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. That card, it's pretty pushed. It's basically a three mana six two. But if you burn your energy, you're not going to get any more after that. Encore is real. It's a real ability. Well, what does it do? Most basic MTG card. Hey, it can hit you for six damage and more if you have like a lot more energy on you. This could be something that at least pushes the energy mechanic. A little bit further than it was before. Encore is like unearthed, but you get tokens equal to your opponents. Oh God! So for five mana, I get like I could potentially get three Rage Starkers and get like a bunch of energy, and then attack with all of them, and whatever doesn't get blocked, I just buff it up. What do I have? Six energy times two. That's twelve. I guess in Commander would be that broken. Great energy card. Even if the art, we got energy. You can see the energy in the background. That Rage Starker is electrifying. 
you can only pay once per attack. No way. You may pay a green. You may pay energy when you do. Oh, you know what? I think you're right. It doesn't say you can pay any amount of energy. Pay. You may. No, I don't. Is that really how that works? When it attacks, you can pay energy. When you do, it gets plus. What do you guys think? You can you can pay it only once or as much as you want. I could totally understand that. But I would think that you'd be allowed to pay whatever you want. Only once per attack? Oh, well, that sucks. All right. Rage Starker. You're fair. You're a little too fair for this show, but yeah, that's fine. All right, moving on. We got the uh, Viashino. Viashino Proyogation. Uh, that is not the Viashino I remember from back in the day. And it's also a black elemental, apparently. So it's a 3-4 creature. Whoa, 3-4 creature for one mana. There better be some big downside to this. When Viashino Proyogation enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, uh, target attacking creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn where X is its power. Target attack. Well, how are you going to get it in play? You have to give it flash. It's like completely pointless. Kicker of two. Okay, so if you somehow give this thing flash and pay its kicker cost, you can reduce... You can basically kill creatures with this. Yeah, there's, there is no down. It is literally... It's like the Tarmogoyf of one drops, to be honest. So one mana, three, four creature out of range of lightning bolt would see instant play in Legacy. Commander players looking at this like, what's the big deal? Who cares about this card? It does get hit by, like, still by Swords to Plowshares and uh, Prismatic Ending. 3-4 first turn drop. <laughs> this is funny. Th this whole ability is so niche because the only way you can use it is in combat. But it doesn't have flash, so you have to give it flash somehow. If no other creatures are in play, it hits itself. Uh, only It has to be an attacking creature. Target attacking creature gets minus X, minus X. Content is interesting. Lower the stats and ship it. Anyway, uh, I think... I guess we can make it pass. It's not the most broken of all broken things, but it's pretty stupid. It needs ninjutsu. But then it would just kill your own creature. That doesn't sound... Oh, no. It, you still can't use ninjutsu because you can't pay the kicker cost on it. Useless ability without flash, but 3-4 for one can live with a useless ability. Yep. <laughs> I wonder how many magic cards are out there with completely useless abilities. Like it has like, you know, it's good for one reason, but it has this other line of text that's just useless. Maybe that's a show that we should do. It's probably a few out there. All right, black, black, one generic for the Loth Lothesh Chromation. It's a four loyalty vampire warrior. It's interesting, like, the AI hasn't caught on yet that the Planeswalker, it's his name. It's not a creature type. We very, it's very rare. They, they're always putting the creature type down there, but not the name, the actual name of the Planeswalker. All right, we got plus one. Choose target permanent you control. You choose a creature type. It's still put into its owner's graveyard. I don't know, I don't know. All right, minus six. Each player draws a card. Wow, this is the crappiest Jace Bellerin I've ever seen. Really bad. Yeah, it's still, it's still put into its owner's graveyard. I guess you have to choose. You have to choose a great a creature that it's on there on its way to the graveyard. It's still put in, or I guess it's or something that's in a graveyard. Choose target permit you control. You choose a creature type. But if it's in the, whatever, I'm not gonna think about this too hard. <laughs> Plus one, do nothing. Number six, politics. Each player draws a card. This, do, yeah, this does not spark Zyber with me. It does not Zyber say. You could say it sucks. Wow, this is a lame mythic rare. Imagine opening this as your mythic rare. Oh well, I guess that could be good. Maybe if you play, if you try hard, if you think hard enough about it, it could be a good card. Anyway, yeah, this is completely useless. Repair of the Dragons! Oh god. Uh, green one generic for instant. Destroy all of them! I we were, You were supposed to repair the dragons, not destroy them! And it's got transmute for a green one generic. And, it has, and it's errated to black one generic. Discard this card, draw a card. What the hell? 
The most party of the order was dreamed as a single, gone, and the unknown graves. It's like, come here, we will, we will repair the dragons. No, now we completely blow them up. I need some more sound effects here. We'll blow up all the dragons. Yeah, destroy all of them. <laughs> Sounds as sushi likes this. Ship it. <laughs> I love how it like it's a basically continuing the sentence of the name like destroy all of them what destroy all of what all the dragons we were going to destroy repair all the dragons but instead we blew them off blew them up doesn't transmute usually tutor yes usually it does and the even weirder part of this card is it says transmute for a green and one generic but then in the end you're only like you're paying a black one generic it's like you read it on the, on the same card. Okay, the most party of the order was dreamed as a single. Gone and the unknown graves. They are unknown at this point. Tim Callaway. Are these all generated by the same AI? Or is it some sort of doll E or chat GPT for MTG? I do not actually know the specific of this. But I do have a link in the description to the Twitter account. Ro uh, Robo Rosewater M. And they have an AI gen uh, generating community. You can be part of their Discord. And check out exactly how they make these cards. I think it's all from the same AI. And then you use a separate AI to create the pictures. But I don't know for sure. Task failed successfully. Killed all the dragons. Exactly. Okay, well, uh... Okay, technically this card doesn't actually make sense. Because it should just say destroy all the dragons. And also the transmute thing is a little bonkers, so... Moving on. Funny stuff. Tangle form. It's an enchantment turtle. Okay, so it's like, you know, it's like a tribal card. Haste! With grandeur. Um... Discard another card named Tangle Form. Take an extra turn after this one. I think it's I think it's broken. So basically, it's an enchantment with haste. Whatever. It's, it's not going to be attacking for very much. Uh, but you get to discard another card named Tangle Form. So basically, discard a card with Tangle Form in your hand, and you just take an extra turn after this one. And if you could return that card from your graver back to your hand, you have infinite turns. Uh, technically fair in Commander, because you'll never have two cards named Tangle Form. Or, at, like, I don't know, you guys said something about the attractions can give you s several cards of the same name. Liquid Soulfly says, ship for turtle with haste. Oh, yeah, the age-old answer, who will win, the, tur the tortoise or the hare? Well, maybe the tortoise when it has haste. Is Grandeur a thing? I don't think so. Also, every spell that adds cards in your hand from the grave, yeah. Broken with that, uh, where is it? Broken with that one angel that lets you bring back enchantments, for sure. The turtle gets there first. Anyway, yeah. Disqualified. Probably too broken. Probably, I don't know, maybe it's fair. But I have a feeling there could be infinite time walks with this thing. Pride's Demise. A black, black, two generic instant. If a forest and a merfolk you control. You hear that, Simic merfolk fam? Uh, if a forest and a merfolk you control, you gain three life. Would you like to complete that sentence, please? I'll have, uh, sentences that aren't completed for 500, Alex. I'm assuming it means, like, if you control a merfolk and a forest, you gain three life. I don't know why this is a black card. Pride's Demise? That doesn't have anything to do with gaining three life. What's going on over here? Is, like, the forest and my merfolk getting blown up? in exchange for gaining that three life. Yeah, if you control a forest and a merfolk. Soul tie life. <laughs> Soul tie life gain. And that is a really hard way to gain life. This is the worst, this is the worst three life I've ever gained. Right, anyway, moving on. We've got Angelic Covenant. Uh, it's a red three generic two four spirit with Langed. Okay, doable spells you cast cost one less to cast. It must be in reference to its own spells. Some are doable, some aren't doable. Uh, like, for example, I don't know what Langd is, so this is not a doable spell. Is it not doable? We're not, we're not playing with this thing. Yeah, AI having a rough day. Incomprehensible. Well, no, it's a little comprehensible. I can comprehend this one. This one ain't doable, so it's not gonna cost one less. In fact, it's gonna you're, it's gonna be full retail for a red and three generic. 
Cool, I play entirely with spells that do things. Yeah, I know. The entirety of Magic the Gathering cards up to this point are doable spells. Is Emmy doable? Probably. Get Langed. Maybe doable means if you have two mana, you cannot cheat a three mana spell. I don't know, I'm interpreting this as like, just cards that are illegal. Doable spells are uncounterable. Yeah, maybe or spells that can resolve. Doable spells you cast cost one less to cast. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, I'm disqualifying it. Steel Wing Sword, is this a doable spell? Okay, we got a black, black, one generic for a 2 1. Merfolk Other Colorless Monk. That is a weird one. We have a naked merfolk that sort of looks like a bat with a very long spear coming out of its leg. I'm hoping it's coming out of its leg. Uh, flying, whenever Steel Wing Sword attacks, if Steel Wing Sword has flying, has flying, first strike in haste. If Steel Wing Sword has flying, it then has flying, first strike in haste. Just in case if it didn't have flying in the first place, it definitely has flying if it has flying. Just a Minri Young of my favorite, but he outran you. They're so close, says Jadu. Sitinal Emissary. Well, it's not, it's, not, it's not that it has double flying. It's just if it has flying, it has flying. Which is a true story. It's not lying. What do you guys think? Is this a doable spell? So don't give it Colossus Hammer. Yeah, it'll lose flying. If it has flying, it won't have flying. And if it doesn't have flying anymore, it loses flying. If it has first strike in haste. <laughs> oh yeah, it has. It also says that it has flying over here. So if it loses flying, oh, do you know what's a thing though? Okay, so if it loses flying, it loses the first strike in haste, right? That's how this works. So so long as Steel Wing Sword has flying, it gets flying first strike in haste. But if it loses flying, it loses everything. That is a very strange way to give it other abilities. Yeah, it's very fast and it actually has some flavor. It's probably faster when you're flying, so it has haste. It might have that first strike because it's flying. It's saying it can't lose first strike in haste as long as that's exactly. That's exactly what it's saying. It's pretty cool. I don't know, probably timestamps can make it lose haste, but whatever. Um I I guess it's I guess it's a pass. It's a doable spell for me. Destroyed by gravity. <laughs> Yeah, gravity exists. Steel wing sword, don't like ye. Those legs aren't made for walking. Not around here. Alright, moving on. We have Rust of the Ving Vinger. Uh, it's a Rust of the Vinger is a green three generic plus one star plus sorry, plus one star. Or it's a one plus star, one plus star. Elf Shaman, Rust of the Vinger. Gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control. You control. It's doing it again. It's repeating the thing again. It gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control, you control. Yeah, if you, the harder you think about it, the more it doesn't make sense. Is a big creature for each other creature you control, you control. Is it like doubling it or something? For each other creature you control, plus every all the other creatures you control. So if I act, so if I act of treason, treason, if I act of treason, my one guy, this, <laughs> it just gets bigger. Maybe I don't know. That's just elves for you. That's the elf shamans. Look how big this guy is. So much taller than this small little hobbit little guy over here. I think it makes sense. I think it means each creature you control that you own, probably. Alright, uh, rest of it gets, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm gonna give it a pass just because that extra run on sentence, that makes no sense. Lee Fisher says, Steel Wing Sword, can it attack when it comes out? It only gains haste when it attacks and can't attack on the first turn without haste, a paradox. If, whenever sword, Steel Wing Sword attacks, if Sora has flying, uh, as for, that is a good question! That is a good question for the judges. I have a feeling the answer is no. So it has haste, but it's useless. 
I guess, um... I have no idea how to use the haste. That's a good point. Wow, what a catch. Alright. Moving on to Ayu Iliation. It's a red 2 generic 1-1 one, one vampire spirit. Uh, with the activated ability of pay 2 generic and an is it. Uh, target creature gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Very underwhelming. Blue 1 generic Ayu Iliation can attack this turn as though it didn't have defender. Okay, that's fine. You didn't have Defender anyway. <laughs> and then uh, we have for Golgari, Golgari, tap. Ayu Il Iliation deals one damage to any target. Exile. Holy crap! This is like in the complete opposite direction of good. This is the operate. This is in the in direction of complete garbage. This is like, I don't know. This is Homeland's power level. You deal one debt. You splash two colors. Or I guess you could just splash one. To deal one damage to any target, and then you lose your AU Iliation. Somehow it's all bad. <laughs> Perfection. It got inspired by like homelands, fallen empires. That's how they made this thing. It's too fair, just shred it, sure. But you know, it's gonna have a pass. Can attack this turn as though it didn't have defender. Just in case you give it defender, it's ready. Oh my god! I don't even know what this thing does. Do I have to zoom in a little bit further to read this thing? Okay, we got the Silver Glade Strider. It's a white, red, one generic, three loyalty planeswalker with the name of Aura. And it's got six abilities on it. It has so many loyalty abilities, it's cutting into like the text box of the, pla the planeswalker text box. Yeah, that is not a do. This is not going to be a doable card. Okay, okay, let's read this one. I gotta get in close. Choose target spell or ability foretell. Bear more life this turn. All right, zero. Until your next turn, you may cast spells from, from, uh, you may cast spells from among cards exiled with Silver Glade Strider, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. I think that is a fine ability. Minus two. Destroy target attacking creature. I don't know how you do that with a loyalty ability. Then look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a black card from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. Then shuffle. This is impossible. Minus five. Silver Glade Strider deals seven damage. Divide it as you choose among one, two, or three targets. That is probably possible. It's probably really hard to pull off since it starts at three loyalty. Minus two. Create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control. It gains menace. It's probably fine. And minus eight. Draw once. Target permanent becomes a 4-4 black zombie giant and red planeswalker with you may cast it without paying its mana cost. As usual, you know, usually when these planeswalkers have a billion of these abilities, the last one makes no sense whatsoever. Nothing. Zero. Uh, we've never read a Planeswalker that had five to six abilities, and it all was comprehensible. This one's pretty close, but uh, no donut. Sorry, Silver Gate Strider. I give you a two out of ten. This is not a doable Planeswalker, that's for sure. Word soup of undoableness. You will not get one generic less. Okay, Constant Tempest. Uh, blue, blue, four generic, instant. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand at four mana, sure. Uh, sorry, at six mana, sure. You can cycle it for four mana. Again, it's doing this. Cycle, white, three generic. You can pay a red and three generic, discard this card, draw a card. It's like this casting cost of three white is just part of the name. It's not actually the casting cost. This is the casting cost. When you cycle Constant Tempest, you may exile it. If you do, put it onto the battlefield. If it's a cre... If it's a creature card, put onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put to put onto the battlefield tapped. Okay, so it's going on the battlefield no matter what. But holy crap, does this card make no sense? If it's a creature, you put on the battlefield. But if it's not, it's that's an instant that's coming onto the battlefield tapped. Not doable at all. Doesn't Zyber either. Talks of Valor. A green, 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 three generic for a 4 4 human soldier. Uh, if Talks of Valor has indestructible. <laughs> 
Don't you dare get indestructible! The AI is like, why doesn't any of these indestructible creatures get destroyed? Do you know what? I think I will try to do it. Um, but I guess it will fail, right? If it has, if Talix of Valor has indestructible, destroy it. So, I mean, it will try to get destroyed, but just won't, yeah. <laughs> why won't I die? What is going on here? This is impossible. Immortality is so bad. You can see, you see the s several phases of Talix of Valor. You know, immortality is, uh... It's uh, it's a, it's a, it's not a wish for everybody. It's like an illusion, yeah. It's six mana draw the game spell. Well, not really. I think it, it just tries to destroy it and it fails. That's all. I don't know, or maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe it draws out the game, but I doubt it. Okay, well, there's some flavor text here. I hope I can read it. Era Fifished by Acorn Sir. Threat into stone. The plain and the walked soft companions have no regrets. That's right, companions don't have any regret. Ecos with the super chat. Thank you so much. This is infinite loop of triggered abilities. I don't know, maybe? What do you guys think? Does this does this trigger for indefinite? Like, I could see that happening. But I don't know why the game would have to lock like that. It wants to die, but can't. Knowledge it card, because it doesn't state when it triggers. If has indestructible, destroy it. It should say, if it would get indestructible, destroy it, but I guess not. Not a triggered ability as worded. Yes, infinite? I don't know. Whatever. I can't tell if this is a doable card or not, so I'm going to throw it in the trash. It's close, though. It's close. Sudden shot. How do I shot web? All right, we have a uh, green one generic. This okay. So far, this looks like a real magic card. But now we have to read the text. It's an enchantment. Well, that doesn't make any sense. The legend rule doesn't have indestructible. All right, so it can be changed. Is what you're telling us. We can destroy the legend rule. It can be blown up. True, it doesn't. The legend rule doesn't have indestructible. It's true. I didn't know that needed specifying, but, you know, whatever. anti Avison. I don't know the reference. I bolt the... <laughs> Finally, we can bolt the legend rule. I can also destroy it and board wipe it and everything. Uh, they can change and it can be changed anyway, whatever uh, It's not this is not a relevant card. I thought this was gonna be something like Shoot down. I don't know destroy target artifact or like a target creature with flying gets bolted or something Ended up not having anything to do with any of that the legend rule doesn't have indestructible Not a doable card All right, we got void tome for a red. It's an instant choose one Target player draws two cards. Okay. Uh, that's already broken. Uh, target opponent exiles a creature they control. That's also broken. Return target non-land permanent uh, to its owner's hand. Why do that? Well, you, so and its bounce all at one red? This is just stupid. This stupid, insanely powerful card. That would be an interesting card in Vintage, though. Oh, yeah, this it danger. It danger big time. Danger, but really cool. Yeah, of course, if you're a red mage. Don't give it to the Delver players. Delver would never get beyond, would never get lower than tier one or tier zero at that mat, uh, for that matter. Super ba banned. It would probably be banned before it, like, reaches print. Banned in spoiler season. Technically doable, though. But then it wouldn't get it wouldn't get the cost reduction. The whole card makes sense. Toads likes the art. Super fair ship it. Oh, uh, what do we got? Okay, we got Grunkus with the super chat. Thanks so much for the five dollars. This is the future of magic. Destroy target rule. Give target rule hex proof. Yeah, we have to give rules hex proof in order to fix them. Magic is a game of breaking rules with other rules, after all. Uh anyway. That card can get banished to the nether realm. I, I don't want to see this. What is this? A, it's like a book with, a, and it sort of looks like a Venus flytrap because that card is a trap. 
All right, that's it for Coffee and MTG today. I hope you enjoy the AI generated cards. You know I love to. And if you want to be part of that action, see them in real time. You got to be here Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Be there or be square. Thanks to all the supporters, especially on the AI streams. I've never gotten donations on the AI streams because of the donations, the super chats, and also the people who support on, uh, become, they are members of the YouTube channel or patrons on Patreon. Because of you guys, I will keep doing this in the morning for eternity. But most importantly, thank you very much for joining me to see all these doable Zyber Danger cards. People like Abzo, Cute Spider, Silvercations, Rhea. We got El Gran Fatso. We got Jess, Burning Paper Sun, Toads, Mark Zill, Lee Fisher. Because we out, without you guys in the morning, I'd have no show. You guys are the true show. So as usual, keep brewing up them coffees, my coffee crew. We'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourself.